This is Access Ann Arbor. Hello. Welcome to a conversation with the Penny Seats Theatre Company regarding their upcoming performance of Electra. Tonight I'm joined by Rush Schwartz, the director of the show, and Emily Caffrey, who will be playing the title character of Electra. So before we get started, why don't we do a little brief introduction. Uh, Russ, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, well, I've, uh, I'm a co-founder of the Penny Seats, and this is um, the second show I'm directing for them. The first was back in October. It was a one-off of uh, Nightfall by Ale Edgar Allan Poe. And uh, this is just a great opportunity to, um, but you asked me about myself, not, <laughs> not the show. I was jumping onto a different question. Certainly. certainly. Um, I've, I've been living in Ann Arbor for about seven years, and uh, I've worked with Performance Network, Jewish Ensemble Theater, and a few other theaters in the area. And um, yeah, Penny Seats is, is, my, is my focus right now. Wonderful, wonderful. And you're originally from the East Coast? Is from Washington, D.C., or just outside Alexandria. We all say we're from Washington when you're from Alexandria. Well, of course. Makes sense for us, you know, uh, Midwesterners. Uh, now, Emily, I understand you're also from out of state originally? Yes, I'm from Western Massachusetts originally um, and have been living in Ann Arbor for the past four years um, and acting in the area and a little bit of directing. And um, my first involvement with Penny Seats was running sound for, I believe it was the first production. Our very first show. Um, yeah. So yes, but I've also acted with the Performance Network and, uh, and uh, two Muses Theater out in West Bloomfield and other local theaters. Wonderful. So you're ingrained in the Michigan community, I see. Yes. Fantastic. Okay. Well, Russ, since you were eager to get into it, why don't we talk a little bit about the Penny Seats first? Okay. Uh, the Penny Seats are a show based in Ann Arbor, and our flagship shows are in um, Ann Arbor's West Park, where Electra is going to be. Wonderful. Can you maybe describe the, uh, the oh, setting sure. for okay. us a little bit? Uh, so, yeah, how to describe West Park? Well, it's it's a it's a park indeed in indeed. the middle of the city, and uh, you have uh, this you, ha you have a band shell that the city renovated a few years ago, and most of our shows have been up on this sort of band shell stage, and across from that you have uh, this uh, pavilion mm -hmm. that is just uh, it, it it's sort of a, a paved area, and then you have these sort of grassy um, steps where people usually sit. And we usually put chairs out on the pavilion so you can watch the show across on the band shell. Um, but for Electra, then we're changing things up a little bit and we're actually using the pavilion itself and using the band shell as sort of a, a, a backdrop. And um, not as much set. Our, our shows usually are, um, we, we actually create a fair amount of set just on, on the band shell and still in, in you know, open air. And uh, it, it's sort of a change of direction for us. Fantastic. And now, so the Penny Seats, when it was originally founded, was there a particular mission or you know idea behind the founding of the company? Well, we thought that there was not. Uh, we, we thought that there was a great opportunity to bring outdoor theater to the space and to do shows that weren't being done, mm -hmm. uh, do, to do things that you couldn't really see anywhere else. And so our first show was Good Night Desdemona, Good Morning Juliet, and um, that I think that that was a great one to set the tone in terms of it being kind of a comedy, but also um, a, a heavy element of fantasy. And uh, weirdly, there, there's a, a decent amount of emotional impact. And there's also a lot of ways that we could customize the show and make it kind of a penny seats show. And I think that that's something that I'm always really happy about, is like when we find ways to, um, when, when it, it, a show has our character in it, and it, it sort of becomes a part of the place, and it becomes a part of the experience. And now the Penny Seats is a, a bit of a hybrid theater company, is it not, where you have elements of community theater, but also uh, striving for elements of the professional theater world as well, is that correct? Yeah, uh, we, we, we kind of tend to think of ourselves as an in-between, uh, a pre-professional theater where actors can come and, and learn with us and work with us. Sure. And uh, we, we've worked with some really fantastic people. Uh, and it, it's somewhere where you can, um, people can be involved on a number of levels from if you, uh, people who are have a slightly less experience but you know think that there's a place f you know for them or, or something that they want to work on but there's also um, 
people who have worked at several professional theaters and just see the opportunity to do a great show. Wonderful. Nice mix of people, it sounds like. Um, well, let's talk a little bit about uh, Lecture, shall we? Um, you want to, since Emily's been quiet here, why don't we, <laughs> Emily, why don't you give us just a little intro about the show Electra? Sure. Um, well, it's Greek. Uh, it's based on the Greek story of, um, of Electra, where uh, her, um, her mother uh, and her mother's lover murdered her father. Oh. Um, and, uh, and Electra is protesting the injustice of that. And Electra saved her brother Orestes and is hoping for him to come back and avenge her father's death. So it's a very light piece. It's very light. I see. I see. <laughs> so um, some pretty intense uh, situations I yes, anticipate. Yes. Um, it's a very high energy show, which has been a challenge and a delight. I bet. So. Now, uh, this, I guess we should probably touch base on these performances will be in starting in July, I believe? Yeah. Uh, it opens July 10th, runs through the 26th. And uh, they're all outdoors, all starting at around 7 p.m. Wonderful. Now, so with Electra, was there something particular that drew you as a director to the show? Uh, for one thing, the character of Electra herself, um, especially as as translated by as written and translated by Anne Carson. Uh, I, I suppose it's sort of a hybrid of those of those factors. Uh, Anne Carson is a poet and a former U of uh, U of M professor, and. Um, I feel like her writing and, and her regard for the character of Electra really makes the piece um, something special. It's, um, I've, I, I think uh, among translations, it, it really, um, it, it kind of pops off the page. It, it ha uh, she uses a, very, a fairly modern style to tell the story, in a very, and it's written in a very poetic style. And I, I think that she tries to find the spirit of the piece, the spirit of the language, rather than uh, the formal and very precise uh, literal translation, you know, which m might not sound the same to a modern ear. You, you, know, you have to do quite a lot of research to know what several lines mean. And uh, she, I think she tries to cut to like, what, what, the, what the characters mean when they say, when they say what they say. And it, it's, um, I think it, it makes it very exciting to work on. And I, after I read it, I, I thought it was something that was absolutely worthy and something we needed to, 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 to do. Wonderful. So uh, originally the show is written by Sophocles, the Greek playwright. Uh, obviously it's been, what, over 3,000 years now since he wrote it. Um, how does it play, do you think, to the modern audience? Uh, you know, aside, it sounds like uh, Miss Carson's uh, adaptation of it, it really has updated it so that we will understand the, the nuances of the characters. Um, but will it play well to, to a, a modern audience? I think, I think it absolutely will play well. And from rehearsals, I, I, I think it does play well. Of course. Um, <laughs> there's a, an interesting element of it in that it's a political story as it has to do with succession and usurpation and um, rightness and, and, you know, and endurance. Uh, but at the same time, when you see it, then you're not really looking at, you know, you, you don't see sort of kings and queens, you, you see a family mm -hmm. that's had uh, horrible, horrible tragedies behind and ahead. And uh, I, I think the relationships are really intense and very, very, very vital. I, I think, that's, I think that, that's what draws audiences to it. It's what makes the piece very magnetic. Certainly, I think uh, any modern audience could could uh, take that and, and go with it. Now, as far as the character of Electra herself is concerned, mm -hmm. does she speak to you on a, on a personal level? Yes. Um, I find that while her situation is a lot more heightened and dramatic than anything that I've thankfully experienced, <laughs> of course. Um, there are so many elements. The relationships, as Russ was saying, uh, are really um, natural to connect to. And they're strong, but not simplistic. Uh, she has uh, a really strong relationship with her sister, and they have uh, opposing views on how to deal with this injustice and having no power in their family. And um, so they're, they're on opposite sides, but they very much love each other. And as someone with a sister, that's <laughs> something that has been 
a, a direct parallel to my life. So there are lots of things like that um, that, that I really connect to. Certainly. Yeah. It's nice to have a strong female character to, to really, you know, dig yes. your teeth into, I assume. Absolutely. Um, now, as far as for the folks at home uh, who want to come see the show, uh, obviously we're dealing with some really heavy subject matter here, uh, some intense situations. Is this a show, though, that will play for children as well, or is it something that maybe uh, is more for a teenage and on audience? That's a fascinating question. <laughs> um, I think that we're recommending it for people over 16, but not because um, it's not exactly a violent show. There's no, I don't think there are acts of violence that you see that w are, are uh, jarring, but it is a very intense show. Certainly. And I think um, some of the themes that it deals with are, are fairly troubling. And so, um, I mean, if, if since the, the main characters are in a situation where members of the family literally want to kill each other, and would if they could. And so uh, I think... Maybe it best to leave the children at home. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think for, for m mature, um, mature children, um, mm -hmm. you know, young, young adults who, um, you know, who ha ha have that kind of interest in, uh, in theater and, and in literature and um, kind of w and want sort of the, the broader experience. Certainly. Now, we talked briefly earlier when you were describing West Park about how we were, you were going to take a, a different approach to the staging uh, of the show than the Penny Seats has done in the past. Do you want to go a little bit more in depth on how the production will actually play out in the West Park? Sure. Um, well, other companies have also used the pavilion uh, successfully as a, play, as a place to stage shows. And um, I think that we're, we're actually looking to use quite a lot of the park. Since if mm. you're sitting on the grass, then um, there's this whole range of, of view that you have. And certainly your focus is going to be in front of you on this sort of um, deep space. But uh, I, I really like the idea of playing with uh, the different angles that people can, can come from. Uh, and so our set is extremely simple. And uh, we want the focus to be as much as possible on the actors. And also, it, it, uh, there's not that much need for, uh, for a lot of set in, in the way that we're doing it. And so it, it, it's sort of a process of figuring out what, what essentials are part of the show and what needs to be built, like what needs to be layered on that. And so um, it's, it's always been interesting to me to see, um, to solve the problem of how do you hide people in an open park where there's no cover and it takes a long time to get to the only cover, which is the band shell. <laughs> and so since you can't hide people, then entrances need to be very public. Uh, everyone needs to see them coming, or you need to send the actors at the audience in a way that they don't expect. And so um, playing with that is, has been a lot of fun. Absolutely. It, it sounds like that would be challenging for an actor as well, since we're diminishing the, <coughs> the setting and the other visual aspects of the show. It sounds like the focus is all on you as, as an actor. Is that, is that daunting, or is that a, a chance to really revel in it? It's a little daunting. <coughs> um, it's, it's exciting being so close to the audience and I and, and the other uh, actors speak to the audience a lot and try to get them on our side um, rather than my mother's side. Uh, so, <laughs> so no fourth wall here, huh? No fourth wall. Um, and, and that's been really fun and something I'm really excited for when we do get to do it for an audience is to um, is to really acknowledge their presence and have them be another character. Yeah, you so. can really feed off the energy, I, I mm -hmm. assume. That's wonderful. Um, now, let's talk a little bit about the rehearsal process. You're about maybe a month in, is that correct? Three, three weeks. Three weeks. Wonderful. How's it going? Uh, any pitfalls with such intense uh, uh, work, both uh, as far as the emotional elements and as well as, I assume, a, a quite a heady bit of literature as well. In terms of pitfalls, then sometimes it's just that, um, that there, are, there are moments then uh, where it's necessary for us to stop and go over a piece of text and, and work on it a few times. I mean, th this, this is true of any play, but uh, some of the references in this, uh, some of the th things that are part of, of Greek drama where we'll need to kind of touch base about um, 
all the things we could possibly do. And since it's not like a modern show where a lot of the references are there for you, the sets there for you, the um, so much of it is very open, and it's you know you have the text and you have the actors, and that's that's kind of it. <laughs> and so there, there's a lot of moments where we want to work through interpretation and figure out, figure out again what we need and what we could do. So is this uh, this an area where you were discussing earlier uh, Miss Carson's text? Now, did you review other versions of Electra before you decided on Miss Carson's? I'd read other versions before, and hers really jumped out at me. Um, and uh, actually, it was written as a part of a three-volume. Uh, she she re basically wrote a retelling of the Oristia, uh, oh. adapting um, the first part, Agamemnon, from Aeschylus, the second part, Electra by Sophocles, and the third part, um, Orestes by Euripides. And it's, it's three very different playwriting styles from, these, from the dramatists. And, uh, she, and each of them also sort of has a different style in, from Anne Carson. Hmm. And uh, these, um, I think that these were all performed in a row uh, some years ago. But I, um, I think that you know, for, um, for a single show, then the, the Electra, I, I thought, has so much richness in the text and in the characters. That's something that, um, that we wanted to go after. Wonderful. Now, speaking of, they used to be performed together, you said. Now, seeing this as a one-off play, do you think the audience will have any missing pieces from just seeing the one? Because it sounds like this is the, the meat of the sandwich, if you will, the, the middle of the, the, the three. Well, um, the actors, at least in the beginning, then they, they waste very little time getting you up to speed on who I killed see. who and what it means <laughs> now. And so um, what I find really interesting um, even more, well, I, I, let's not rank these things here. <laughs> but I really like the fact that there are little touches that sort of point you in the direction of where the story is going afterward. And while the story, I, I think Electra feels very complete as a play. And but, uh, there's elements that I think we've been, uh, we've been trying to uh, bring out in the mythology that um, I think help tell some of the, some of the following story too, that, that give you an impression of what is ahead. Uh, and so it's, that, that, that's, I see that as both a challenge and something that uh, has, has been a draw for me from the beginning, is that it's part of this broad sweep. Absolutely. So Emily, tell me, for you personally, mm -hmm. through the rehearsal process, becoming one with the character and, and really absorbing the lines, because I know this is a really language heavy piece, especially right. for you, uh, have there been any things that you've really struggled with or that you've particularly really reveled in? Well, the language is incredible. Um, it's, it's beautiful poetry, and it's gritty, and it's very visceral. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so it's been wonderful to work with. And then the challenge is to make it all specific. Sure. So it's not just beautiful words, but beautiful words that mean something and that I'm trying to do something with. Um, and so that's, that's uh, an ongoing project. <laughs> um, and, and also, um, I come out in my first scene uh, mourning already, uh, and uh, very high energy, very angry. And so, uh, and so then the challenge is starting at such a high level, but still having somewhere to go. And whenever I've tried coming in without the necessary energy, it really doesn't work. Right. <laughs> so that's so that's it's zero zero to sixty right, right off the bat, huh? Which is which is fun. Sure. Um, and challenging. And complex. <laughs> yes. Uh, now, uh, I didn't touch on this earlier. Wh what's the runtime of the show? Do you have an idea at this point of the rehearsal process? I'm guessing it's going to be around 85, 90 minutes. Okay. Um, we can't be totally sure since there's always elements that we're layering on, but sure. um, I think. It, it's a it's a sort of a medium length show, and it, it's probably going to be all in one act. Wonderful. So this is something you, I believe you said starts at seven in the yep. evening. So this is something that would be over before sunset and yeah. before those mosquitoes get out. <laughs> correct. Yeah, we, we we have enough experience in this area now to know <laughs> uh, at, at what point then we're going to be done for, and it's it's going to be well well within that. Wonderful, wonderful. So uh, tell me, is there is there anything else that really to you you want your audience to know about Electra? I, um, 
she is, I think that you kind of love the character of Electra, and you are also kind of afraid of her. Um, there, there are these elements. Uh, I, I think that I, I think all the all the various people's relationships with Electra are really compelling, and they um, to me they they just read like this jagged line where there are these peaks and falls uh, mm -hmm. all over the place. And um, I think that there's this wisdom in the playwriting about how people relate to each other, and a, a wisdom about that there might just be one thing, like one a, a word or a phrase that will totally change, that, that you know will change someone's estimation of you and, you, and you, you, you can't stop yourself, or that'll change a situation. And I, I think um, these stand out to me as, as these beautiful moments. Um, and so that, that's, that's sort of what comes to mind right now, is just these, uh, the, the, the attraction and also um, the, the intensity of these relationships. Now, we've talked a lot about Electra herself. Who are some of the other supporting characters that are going to, uh, you know, come to play here uh, in the show? Uh, I know you mentioned her mother, her sister, mm -hmm. and a brother as well. Yes, my brother, um, and uh, and he has uh, a companion and uh, a tutor who's guiding him. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a Greek chorus. Oh, wonderful! Um, who? are are interesting they they are they seem to be on my side and they seem to be helping me but sometimes it, they're working against what i think is best uh. for me and what i want so that's that's been a fun relationship to explore more struggle for poor electra <laughs> uh, i i find the the character of uh claudia mestra who is in the show for um she, you know the, the the character i think has a huge impact and you know, uh, after the script, after I read it the first time, I just kept on thinking about. It. And then after after we started working on the show, I realized that her her portion of the script is actually fairly small. But it's mm -hmm. like right dead in the center, and uh, she's um, also like Electra. Then she she's very she draws you in, and also is is very frightening, and um, and, and brutal. And that relation to Electra, that is her mother, is that correct? Yes. Wonderful. So at odds with mother. Yes. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, so now. When you're dealing with, with this ancient Greek text, we have relationships that are relatable. Is the show, Russ, have you set the show in ancient Greece, or is it going to be brought forward in time at all? I think the modern, uh, the modern feel of the language uh, would have seemed a little, it, it's interesting, we, we had some options to make it more modern and to bring in more elements that would sort of modernize the play. and. Um, very early on in rehearsals than just, just seeing it. And um, I think that w we began to feel that it, it, it didn't need that. Mm -hmm. the, it, the, the play itself sort of, um, especially when you're out in the air, then um, we, I think a certain amount of simplicity. Uh, I, I think it, it has sort of an indeterminate location um, it's it's not not modern, <laughs> but it, it's definitely you know. But it's not ancient either, and I, I think it's some place where it's it seems alien enough for the story to be happening, but also um, also immediate uh, in that you you know you can't I if you squint then you're not you know it, it's not like you're seeing um, you you still sort of see Ann Arbor around you and you see the story going on and so um, I I think. I, I've, I've found several ways to not answer your question, <laughs> and Indeed. I think I'm going to end uh, with, with, with not answering that one. Fair enough. Well, we'll look forward to seeing how you, uh, how you do uh, pull that off. It, it sounds certainly like it, it will play well in any, in any generation, so uh, that's something to look forward to. Now, aside from Electra, I understand the Penny Seats also has some other things coming up in the future. Do you want to touch on that at all? Our next show is Tom Foolery. Tom um, Foolery. It's a musical review based on the music of Tom Lehrer, hmm. uh, who wrote songs like Poisoning Pigeons in the Park and oh. other, um, other classics, other kind of, you know, Some wonderful mean, ditties. venomous classics. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's, it's going to be a very, very funny show. Now, will that and be performed in West Park as well, or is that a different venue? That's going to be at Connor O'Neill's um, in, uh, in Ann Arbor on, I think, Thursdays in October. Oh, wonderful. 
Uh, I've been to Connor O'Neill's once or twice. And uh, it, will that be in the main area of the bar, or will that be set aside uh, in the Celtic room? I think it's going to be in the other room. Oh, that'll be wonderful. Now, now going forward, uh, the Penny Seats, uh, you know, we touched on, it does have some community theater elements. Uh, are there any, or any inkling that you'll be doing any other events in the future, aside from the main stage offerings, such as Electra in the summer? Well, uh, I think their summer program is, as I said, it's sort of our flagship. Sure. Like we, um, I think that's where, where the uh, mainstay of our audience, what, what they sort of expect from us. But um, at the same time, then we're always, we're, we're really interested in exploring, expanding, um, and finding other venues, finding other ways to put on, uh, put on shows. We, we have, par uh, in the past, we partnered with Performance Network on one show uh, to do something in the winter. Um, and we, we, I think that we're always looking for more ways to gather offerings out there. And so I will have a better answer for you <laughs> about that uh, at, at some point in the near future. Sure, it's ever evolving. Um, now, before we wrap up here in, in a minute, is there any last sells? What's so great about coming to see a show like Electra in the park uh, as an audience member? Uh, it's potent, which yes. I think is fun, but it defies uh, simplistic conclusions. Sure. I, I think people are afraid that it's going to be um, to be big and, and grand and weird and yeah and boring, and it's fun. It's yeah. uh, it's vital. Like it's 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 scary. It's funny. Uh, I, I think that uh, Gr Greek drama is is something that people need to see. And I think, I think Ann Carson's version of Greek drama is something people need to see. That's outstanding. And also, as just an added bonus, uh, I believe uh, you can bring a picnic dinner uh, along with you to see the show. Maybe have a glass of wine, is that correct? You, you, you can indeed. Um, and in fact, we have a catering partner. And so you can Wonderful. come to the park, and uh, you can either reserve on our website to pick, up, uh, to pick up food, or you can actually just go over and, and, and buy some. And that, that's been great. Um, it's something that's worked out really well for, um, for us and for the experience of going to a Penny Seeds show is that it's, it's this great evening. And what would Greek theater be without libations, right? <laughs> so it sounds like you've got all the, the ducks in a row and, and as rehearsals progress, we'll look forward to seeing the show. Uh, once again, remind the audience when, uh, when the shows will be. Uh, it is July 10th through 26th in uh, Ann Arbor's <coughs> West Park with shows running um, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at 7 p.m. Outstanding. Sounds like it'll be a lot of fun, maybe a little scary for, for poor Emily, but, uh, or excuse me, Electra. Uh, but it sounds uh, like it'll be a great experience, uh, a wonderful night in the park, and we, uh, we look forward to seeing that uh, as, we, uh, as we come uh, to a close here tonight. Um, any last words that you have for the audience? Uh, I, I, I think Electra has all the words. Electra has Electra the words. Has have to go hear them. So we'll let her speak for us. Uh, please come see Penny Seat's uh, version of Ann Carson's version of Sophocles' Electra. That was a mouthful, but I'm sure it will be an outstanding evening for the older children and the rest of the family. Uh, so please uh, join the Penny Seat's for that production and Tom Foolery in October. Outstanding.